So again, what you want to do is start a new file and yeah, go down here where the gear is and switch it to 3D modeling. Let it load up. Your computer might take long. So basically, the first steps would be that we need to go to a mesh, our mesh command right here, where we get our mesh tools. This is basically all the tools we're going to be pretty much using for this project. So make sure you have that mesh up. Again, to get this set up, you have to go to here. 3D modeling. Uh, the first step would be we have to create a box. Now, this doesn't specify any size, but the thing about boxes, you, what you want to do is go into an isometric view. It's a lot easier to draw. So, go to view, go to uh, southeast, uh, actually, I like northeast. Northeast or something like that, it doesn't matter. And another thing I want you to do before we start drawing is that we should go to a uh, conceptual view. So if I go to view, uh, where is it? Yeah, 2D. Uh, okay, so where it says 2D wireframe, you guys can go to. Actually, we don't want conceptual because we want to see the lines. The actual meshing. So, what we want is shaded with edges. I believe that's the one. If not, we're good. we can change that back. It doesn't matter. But right now, go back to mesh. So, I went to view and changed that visual, and I went to an isometric view. That's my first setup. Next, I need to go to box, and I just draw a box. Alright, I was wrong about the. Well, actually. It wasn't wrong, it's just weird. I picked the wrong color, you guys can barely see it. So I'm just going to change my color of my object. To make it simple for myself in the future, I'm just going to add a layer. So to do that, uh, open my show menu bar. Format layers, add a layer. Uh, let's do blue. Layer one. Alright. Oh jeez, that's not good enough. You guys can barely see it. Alright, so we we'll just change that again. That gives you guys enough time to catch up. There we go. Alright, that's that's a good color. So you guys can see the hatching, the lines, that's the mushing. So we need to do that. And you can see that any cube you do, it's gonna be three by three, three boxes. Uh, wide, three boxes high. You can change that. Uh, just like the video we were showing before. She had more because it was a camera. For this project, we're not going to do that. And so it's pretty much drawing a box, just like a regular uh, 3D solid box that you draw. Uh, the only thing is now what we're going to do is we're going to use a 3D gizmo. So it's set. Our 3D gizmo is right here. It's set up move. And you can change it into rotate, scale, and no gizmo on. But we, want, we want to keep it at a move cut, move uh, gizmo. And we're going to use fil our filter. We're going to set it to face because we want to select the face. That's our first step. So you got to go over here, click the face. You have face on, and you select the face. Now, best see, see by my mouse, you can see a blue screen, a uh, blue box. That's a face type uh, symbol that you're in face command. So you're going to select the face to get highlighted. It's asking us to select the center face. And now, if you actually move your mouse over to the blue, you can click the blue uh, Z axis arrow. If you click on that, you can pull it up. So just like that, there's no specified distance. You just pull it up any, t any height you want. And you just go up, let's say up to here. That, that looks fine. You can also go down and inside to make it like a box. So it gives you two options. Or you can move it move it even. So I moved it up. And now I can actually move it on a Z on the X axis also. 
Yes, question. So, uh, just realized that you guys, some of you don't have 2011. So, to make this work, you guys should still have this option to go to face. If you can't see it highlighted or able to select it, what you want, what you can do is hold control, control and select the object or face, and then you could select the blue arrow for Z and just stretch it up, and do the same thing with. Uh, X and then if you want again you can do it this way. If there's a issue that one actually is interesting. So here I actually have a problem because mine actually didn't stretch this part. That's okay, I can just undo. It's good because I select the control. Let's see if this works. Ah, that's okay. So, once you have that part up like that, or any other shape you want, what it wants us to do is practice some, uh, what does it want us to do? It wants to smooth it. Smooth it. So, you want to go to Smooth More, and you select your object, and you click Enter. And it will smooth it in. And you can do it again, just clicking on it, or click Enter again. And again, it just keeps on smoothing it until it gets to a point where it doesn't, it won't smooth anymore. So you can always unsmooth also if you need to. So now I have something like this. Hopefully you guys have something similar to that. If not, it's okay. And the next skill it wants us to teach you is uh, the crease. To add a crease, you just go over here where it says add crease and you select place where you want to add a crease. So let's say I pick this one and I click enter. And I, and, oh, and I leave it as always so it doesn't change no matter if I smooth it out or anything. So now it's a crease, it's like a little flat area where I can work from there. Now the next step from there is I can extrude that face. I can actually bring it out even more. Going to your extrude tool. Okay. Extrude face. How do I make the cre cre crease? Yeah. Uh, you select Add Crease and you just click a surface. If you can, you have to hold Control. You might be able to do it then. So hold Control and cl click it. Then click Enter. And then it should ask you always. If it doesn't, it might be 2011. And you click Enter. The only problem is with teaching this is that 2011 and 10, a lot of things change with mesh. So if there's something different about yours let me know so I can tell you what to do to fix it right, so that's how you make a crease and after you make a crease what we want to do is extrude the face to do that you go to your extrude face command and you select that face that you want to extrude and you can just pull it out I have two so I'm just going to pull two of them out so I have something weird like this okay it can rotate so it kind of looks like a dolphin's tail or something. Flipper. Anyways, once you have that crease, you extrude it. And actually, that is the first project. That's the first laugh, pretty much. That's just a basic feeling of how you can work with this. Again, there's other things you can do, such as if you want to change the square to make it smaller or bigger, so you can extrude it out. So all you have to do is go to the gizmo over here and change it to scale and then go to your face and if you need to you might need to hold control and select that face now here's what I want to teach you guys a little bit about there's a couple options in here in this gizmo Z blue arrow that just pulls it up and down but we're, since we're in scale it scales it up and down red does the same and green, well, it can't really do much now because it doesn't scale it back. Next option is the blue-red outer one, which expands it on that axis. The blue-green, you can't really do much about that because it well, actually it does work. Extends it on the on the z-axis. And there's a third one that's the green, 
red, which is right behind it, right there, that also stretches it out on your red. Now it's hard to explain, but once you just start clicking around it, you'll see which ones do what. There's outer ones and there's inner ones, so and there's that point where you can move. So I'm gonna make Mickey Mouse look a little different. So you can stretch that out. Let's see. And then you can work from the bottom. Let's say I want to. Uh, do you guys have the merge up face option? This. No? Yes. Alright. Alright. So, in our experience <coughs> with scaling, is that I've, my scale gizmo on, I click face, and I select this area here, hold control if I need to, and I'm going to scale it up, like so. Yeah, I'm going to scale it out this way. Have that done, click enter, and I'm going to pull it out on the axis. And <coughs> now the interesting part is you can also add options to it. So you can always add, let's see, yeah, mesh box, a cone, cylinder, pyramid, and a mesh sphere. I'm going to add a sphere because my my mouse needs eyes. So add that. I'm just going to mirror it. Can you always use your regular tools like mirror? Let's see, where's mirror? I'm going to add one. So, I'm going to copy it actually. That's what I want to do. There we go. Copy. F8. Put those on. There we go. And now if I want, I can smooth this out even more. So go to mesh, go to smooth mouse, smooth it, smooth it. Do it one more probably. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. See, now it comes up in error. I can't smooth it anymore. That's okay. It looks nice as it is. Now if I go to a different visual view, I get a mouse head kind of with a one ear up. So that's how you make a mouse head.